Welcome to Worship Night at the Cabin number 22. Tonight I'm going to be talking about the fountain of youth, the magical fountain of youth. You know, it's, it's a fantasy, a legend, um, a myth that's been going on for centuries, the fountain of youth. It's supposedly this mystical spring uh, that restores the youth of anyone who comes in contact with the water. Uh, tales have been going on uh, and retold and told and retold. The legend became prominent way back in the 16th century when the Spanish explorer, uh, his name was uh, Ponce de Leon. And, and according to, to the legend, uh, Ponce de Leon was searching for the Fountain of Youth when he actually discovered Florida in 1513. Um, the unknown location and existence of the Fountain of Youth is, is, a, is a myth. Or is it? Is it a myth? Actually, there was really a type of fountain of youth found in the Bible. So we're going to be talking about that. You know, in the Bible, there was this type of fountain of youth, if you want to call it that, um, that was a supernatural means to keep humans alive eternally. Wow. Um, you know, that fountain of, of youth that I'm talking about in the Bible is really not a fountain. It's really not a spring. It's really not water. It's actually a tree. It's called the tree of life. And the tree of life was uh, intended to keep humans alive eternally. Uh, it's found in the Garden of Eden. Um, if you go back in Genesis uh, you'll find that in the Garden of Eden, there was this amazing tree called the, the Tree of Life. Uh, the Garden of Eden, it was a special place. Uh, you know, everything was perfect, lush, and full. It was, it was a beautiful paradise. And there were all kinds of trees, and uh, they were pleasing to the eye and, and good for food. But, but there were two really unusual trees that stood out from the rest that God put there. In fact, uh, they were supernatural trees. One was called the tree of life, and the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Those two trees were special trees planted by God. Now, both of these trees were located right in the middle of the Garden of Eden, where God placed Adam, the first man, to work it and take care of it. Now, Adam was allowed to eat from any tree in the garden except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's because if he ate from that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God warned that he would die. God did, however, allow Adam to eat from the other supernatural tree, the, the tree of life. Actually, the tree of life had mysterious, extraordinary qualities. Uh, for if anyone ate from the tree of life, they would live forever. Now, this tree uh, not only sustained Adam's life, but it sustained it eternally as long as he continued to eat from it. He had to eat from this tree of life uh, to live forever, basically. Uh, you know, eventually God created Eve, Adam's wife, and you probably know the rest of the story. They both eventually disobeyed God's rule, uh, deceived by Satan's words, and they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because they disobeyed God's command <clears throat> to not eat from that tree, uh, their penalty would be that they would not live forever but would eventually die. Now, by what means would they die? Uh, would God just kill them and wipe them off the earth? No. Uh, they would die because they were prevented 
from eating from the tree of life, kind of a fountain of youth <clears throat> in a sense. Um, so as a, a sentence, a penalty for, for their sin, uh, they were eventually kicked out of that beautiful garden, uh, the Garden of Eden, but, but uh, more importantly, they were cut off from the tree of life. And, and how were they prevented from eating from it? <clears throat> Did God um, just burn up and destroy the tree of life? No. no. Here's what he did. <clears throat> God placed these powerful angels in, in front of the tree called cherubim. Now, they were like guards, like some type of angelic supernatural guards. And not only that, the Bible tells us that he placed a flaming sword that constantly flashed back and forth in front of the tree. Some type of supernatural flaming sword that uh, flashed to guard the way to the tree so they couldn't get to the tree of life. And without eating from that, they could no longer live forever. Uh, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, a section. Genesis 3, 22 to 24. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Wow. Now everything went downhill from that scene. Uh, death and sin itself, you know, came into a perfect world. And, and the effects are with us, each one of us, today. Not only uh, is physical death the destiny of every person, but spiritual death is a real possibility because the effects of sin. So, you know, Adam and Eve eventually died, though they lived almost a thousand years. I mean, you know, I, back in uh, Worship Night in the Cabin number 19, I talk about uh, that thousand-year-old man. But that life sustaining tree was was gone um, we don't know what happened to it if the God eventually just took it uh, to heaven or whatever it's not here now <clears throat> and uh, or did God take it if you think about it closely the the tree of life actually did return but in a totally different form. It came back as a tree, all right. But this special tree took a new shape. This life-giving tree that gives eternal life took a, took a different form. Uh, it took the shape of a cross, the cross of Christ. That is our tree of life. John 3.16, the famous verse, So God loved the world, so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's right. God offers, uh, once again, the opportunity, opportunity to live forever. But it's not because we earn that right. Instead, God's offer is called grace. And it's only accessible through Jesus dying on the cross. Uh, we are no longer condemned of our sin or because of our sin. Instead, we're offered forgiveness because Jesus paid the penalty, the price, to free us from our sins. And the price is his life sacrificed for us. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 
Mark 10, 45. See, his sacrifice was huge. It, through the cross, he was able to uh, reverse the consequences of Adam's sin. Romans 5, 19. For just as through the disobedience of one man, Adam, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience, the obedience of one man, Jesus, many will be made righteous. And, you know, because we're reconciled to God through Jesus, we live eternally. We will live eternally. There's life after death, and we will live in heaven after we leave this world. So, in a sense, the cross of Christ is a type of a tree of life. <clears throat> and, in a sense, a type of, you know, fountain of youth, if you want to think of it as that. So, one more thing. There in heaven, everything comes full circle. In heaven, the, tree, the actual tree of life appears again. And we can find that in the Revelation. Listen to this incredible description of heaven found in the book of Revelation. It's Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. <clears throat> they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. So yeah, the, the tree of life is found <clears throat> in heaven. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. So, yeah, the fountain of youth, a myth, an ancient myth. But we, we, in a sense, got that fountain of youth back. We got that tree of life back, and it's the cross. So, all I can say is we need to praise God and give him glory for offering us that that eternal life through through the cross. And uh, speaking of giving him glory, I, I uh, wrote this song <clears throat> called Glory, Glory. And uh, I, I figured that I must have wrote it back about in 2000 or 2001, I'm guessing. So this song is like 20 years old, but really the message is timeless, right? So... Uh, Glory, glory, it's called. <laughs> Your arms are long enough. Your hands are strong enough. No, no. 
sight is clear enough Your vision strong enough to see me To lead me, yeah Your hearing's keen enough Your presence wide enough to hear me Dear me, there is no boundary to your love, no, 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 there is no limit to your love, glory, glory to the King of glory, glory. Present yet invisible All the world belongs to you You are invincible glory to the king of glory <laughs> so remember you know when you hear about the ancient fountain of youth um, in a sense we've got it we've got the tree of life when you think of the tree of life uh, Jesus died on in a sense on a tree we have the cross which is our tree of life and, and gives us eternal life forever so uh, be safe. Um, you know we're we're living in uh, times of the virus, and and uh, just got to be smart and safe, and and uh, and we need to pray about it. Pray for good health. Pray for wisdom for doctors and and uh, for the scientists trying to develop a vaccine. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we just give you all glory and praise and honor, and we thank you for uh, this concept of the tree of life and, and, and uh, for Jesus dying on the cross for us that gives us life, and gives us life eternal forgiveness of all our sins. So uh, We're made right with you through that cross. So we praise you and honor you, and, and we lift you to the highest place in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, arrivederci.